Welcome to Bon Jovi Discussions. Today, I have a really special guest today. He's an Emmy-winning filmmaker, and he is the editor and producer of the upcoming Bon Jovi documentary. Thank you. Good night. Alex Trudeau Variado, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for coming on, man. You you are a legend. I was looking at your stuff, uh, your IMDb, and and I, your career is about crafting stories about those who, who've made it, who've reached the top. You've worked with Michael Jordan, Tom Brady, and now you're working with the great Bon Jovi. So you got quite a, what's the word I'm looking for here? Quite a few names there that you've worked with and stuff. And uh, so yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's truly great to have you on. So, oh, thank you so much. Yeah. It was kind of a trajectory there, right? I think that John noticed, you know, telling stories about people who reached the top of the mountain. Mm -hmm. And he's like, hey, I've been, I've been at the top of the mountain. Let's have these guys yeah. tell my story as well. And it felt like a great progression. Like it was Michael Jordan and it was Tom Brady. And it was like John Bon Jovi. And it's like, yeah, I can do that. I can, I can pivot and tell us, tell a story because it's all, they're all the similar things of how do you get to the top? What was it like at the top? And then when you come off of that, if you come off of that, what's that journey and how can you make that relatable to people? There, there's three actual similar stories, just three different crafts. And I think those kind of those stories are kind of inspiring to people, especially for people who are trying to make it to the top and, and need a little guidance and to kind of hear, you know, people who look up to Tom Brady or John Bon Jovi or Michael Jordan and those their stories are inspiring to them. So by you creating a story for them to see that, you know, that that's that's monumental to them, I think. Totally. Make, and it, there's like there's an accessibility about it, but then there's as a filmmaker you have to find the relatable parts because nobody wants to watch a story about like we started and we were great and we're amazing and look at we're the greatest in the world and everything's amazing like ter it's terrible nobody wants to watch that and like we knew we didn't want to do that with this story we didn't want to do it with tom tom didn't start with a bunch you know everyone's seen this the pictures of him when he was doing the combine and he's like not you know the greatest quarterback and then becomes the goat like there's a trajectory there and it's John's a similar story. It's, he says it in Doug. He's like, I wasn't the greatest singer of the room. He works hard and you have to tap into like what what got him to that point, what got him to go to be at the top. And that's what makes it interesting. Yeah, ab absolutely. And, you know, just talking with you in the last, you know, few months here, you know, for people that are listening here, Alex has been, this wasn't just another job for, for Alex. I mean, Alex has really put in a lot of passion and a lot of hard work into this. And, you know, just from our tweets and, and messages and stuff, like I've learned all the hard work that you've put into this. And I think once people see this documentary, not only me, but I think a lot of other fans, especially the diehards, I think are really going to appreciate all your hard work. So I just wanted to acknowledge that. I think you put a lot of passion into this and, and I'm looking forward to seeing it. Thank you. Yeah, that passion is a good is a good word for it. I don't I really know any other way than to go all, all in on it and it becomes kind of all consuming and you there's a little bit of responsibility to you right you mentioned like the fans and the people who are waiting for it i i wasn't one of them i crush was my first bon jovi album i was in high school i was i was when i was born when they were blowing up and so i remember getting crushed and hearing crush on the radio and then i had to go to a tower records to buy new jersey and like find it on my own because i didn't wasn't into it but crush put him on the map and i remember listening to that but in terms of the fans like i had to go learn about that, like super fans and fans and and hearing their stories and seeing what they gravitated towards. And there's 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 so many. There's so many people and they and it's this song or it's that song. It's this album's the greatest or this is when they were the best and this was the greatest tour. And they have there's just so many yeah. strong opinions. And as a filmmaker, you can you can take that in and you can listen to it and be like, man, they're they love this. But the moment you try and service those uh expectations or opinions and you're failing as a storyteller you're you're if you're if you're trying to hit all those beats like your experience with living on a prayer is different than mine and if i try to satisfy what you wanted out of it instead of servicing john's journey in this then the documentary is going to suffer because i'm just trying to hit these things for all these different people and everyone's expectations are they're not all going to be met everyone someone's going to think that like dry country should be in there like why dry that's their most important song and needs to do this and if i don't do that i don't meet their expectations and now it has thus failed because of that so you just have to listen to it all take it all in and then just look at the material you have and what's what's the story where's you know it's corny to it sounds like where's the human elements where's the relatability just like a movie they're no different than movies 
movie yeah. characters have their arc and they go through the climax and they go through their um the events that change them and then they they go through that it's the same thing with john what's john going through where and david and tico richie they're all all of them and that was yeah. a big thing like how do we balance all these guys it was never like let's get john and the whole thing is john it was they're a band and in the editing style you'll see i make them kind of talk to one another so it feels like this is a group they're not they're never in the same room together but uh for me it was up to me to find a way to make them chatting like they're they're all in this together because that's what they they were they were all doing this band together so in the editing technique and the cadence you can make it seem like they're all talking together and they all have a voice and they all have stories and they all have backstories and that was that was really that was a really important balance and you learn that from the fans too they want everybody they want their band represented they want their songs they want all of these things in five hours and so you're kind of <laughs> you're just you're just weighing it all as you go yeah i mean i i can't and we'll, and we'll get into the process here in, in a few minutes here but like i can't imagine how hard the the process was of getting 40 years worth of everything in the band compiled into five hours I mean, yeah, that's, yeah. That, that must have been like one of the toughest parts of doing this is cramming 40 years into five hours and, and to be able to tell, you know, a, a big story of the band. You kind of, you just, it's just like a little bit at a time. You just start taking chunks. And and that's why every, I was actually talking to Dorothea about this. I was like, if you, a different editor would have made a different movie, 100%, because there was so much material. There's so many, every interview is over an hour they're, they're two hours some of the ones with john were like hours and so who picks what what pieces are you pulling from these interviews what pieces are you pulling from the archival there's hundreds and hundreds of choices made throughout all of these and someone else would have made different choices would have pulled different like oh that's interesting that maybe didn't resonate with me um like we we're talking about i have three kids and a wife and she's my high school sweetheart john had a high school sweetheart there's things that i tapped into that i was like oh i like i like this this is important this is this is you know, this is personal. I can relate to that. And I'll pull that in. I'll pull this in. And so you just start doing that. And then you get, you know, these massive string outs and massive edits. And then you just start bringing it down. What do we really need to say? What are we trying to say? What do we want the viewer to experience? What do we want them to take away from this? What's the subtext of all this? Because I could have just made a cool video about how great they are. And look at all these amazing concerts. And here's every Bon Jovi song that you love. And that's that's like a concert doc and that's fun and everyone would have fun with that but we didn't want to do that we wanted to happen to something else we wanted to we wanted to do something else with it right and, and i i think you know just speaking as as a diehard you know it, it'd be great and this is one of my questions for you too obviously we've gotten access all areas which was in, i'm sure you know this you know that was a mm -hmm. 1989 documentary and then we got when we were beautiful in 2008 2009 and then but you know those two you know the you know this, I know this, a lot of diehards know this, that the band has always kept their dirty laundry in the inner circle. They've never been ones to okay. air it or or do anything. And and I so in your opinion, what do you think really stands out from this documentary against Access All Areas and When We Were Beautiful? I think those, particularly When We Were Beautiful, is is a moment in time for them. What their answers are for that moment. Um, and I don't think any of those band members are in those moments anymore. I don't, I don't, uh, even if you listen to the answers from those, the answers are different. Some of the stories get repeated and they're like, oh, I've heard that story. And I'm sure you've heard the same story. Like he goes and they go on a talk show and they're like, oh, this story and you've heard it. But some of the, like the way they're answering it and the tone in which they're answering it, they're just not there anymore. That documentary caught them then and there. And with this, we, we definitely are a 2022, 2023, documentary but i think they were able to widen that viewpoint and speak on everything and have this perspective of looking back on all that and that comes with time and age and it's it's a combination that was another part of the editing and storytelling was like how many times are we going back and forth when are we going to now when are we going to go to the 80s how can you either complement those or juxtaposition them on how well or how bad things are going and then make that part of the story flow because it's a really important thing is to you, you can't have everything in the 80s all in one just box and then you and then and then you move on like you had we had to find a way to kind of incorporate that all together and these rich years that have the music and the archival and all these things how do you spread that how do you share the love throughout five episodes and and live in some of those moments in different points in time um so 
yeah. it's just, you know, it's a, it's a, they, they, they do keep things tight and I'm sure there are things they still won't say. And that's up to them. We, we sat yeah. down with all of them. We sat down with John, we sat down with Richie and, you know, you ask the question and so when you get back, you filter through all of that and try to piece it together, you know, different lines from different things to, to tell the best story. And then you hear different versions in different interviews. You same question, totally different version. Like, oh, that happened because of this guy and that happened because of that guy. And then you realize you start putting this together and everyone's going to be confused or someone's going to look like a liar. And that's not what we're setting out to do. It's it's okay that they have their own truths, but I still have to keep the audience engaged and not confused. So how can everyone tell their truths and bring them through this experience without anybody getting lost? And so you have to balance and you have to make some ethical choices of like, well, these two people said this and this and this. And so you're, you're there's as many edit decisions, there's also a lot of ethical decisions and story driven that like this helps the story or this makes it more clear of what is the intention behind this line or this moment. Yeah. Wow. We, and another thing I want to add to that too, is I, you know, just judging from the, the trailer, which we'll get into here in just a second too, because that trailer was incredible. But I, I think, you know, something that we saw too was seeing John very vulnerable and mm -hmm. you know that's something we don't always often see, you know, like I said, band keeps their things in inner circle. And I think two things that I think they're going to really open up about is Richie's departure and John's vocals and to see how vulnerable John was like in the trailer, like when the, when the moment he says, I want out of here. And what I meant was out of Bon Jovi, you know, every time I watch that trailer, I just get chills. And so I, I think at least from the diehard perspective, we want to see something that we haven't seen before because we know the band story and, you know, so we want something deeper and to be able to see his vulnerability and to actually see him open up with you know 40 years you know I, I think that's something that we're looking forward to yeah you very like very vulnerable that's a great people keep using that word in interviews and people have gotten the screeners to see it where they do whatever whatever it is that they're doing and that word comes up a lot and i think uh the director gotham and i realized that early on of like oh the story now is actually very engaging and he's in a place where he's reflective but he's also working towards something else. And there was a journey just within that, just within what he's doing right now. And I think that made him vulnerable. And our director Gotham, his greatest thing is that he created a relationship with John. So if I'm in the edit and I'm going through hours and hours and hours of footage, he's with John filming him in real time. And that's where our dynamic comes into play. He has the relationship. Eventually I created a relationship with John and, and over time and we spoke, but with Gotham, he was there filming him, going through these things with him and talking to him. And they became very personal conversations that I could then bring into the edit while I was filtering through these things. And that's the dynamic between Gotham and I as he was out there and I'm behind the computer pulling it all together. And then I can share all that um, with him. But vulnerable, um, truthful, um, engaging. He's just, he was, there's, there's honesty that he's processing things, um, which is really nice. It's not like a just a front. Um, so I think that's you know that's a big part of where of when and where we caught them because I think if we made the documentary now it'd be different because he's in a different space you can see him going through the interviews and he's, yeah. when he just was in the UK like it's a different tone it's a different it's in a different space yeah and, and I think something like a lot of us as, as fans notice is John is more joyful now you know compared to the last ten years because he's had a lot to to deal with and and we're just loving to to see him so happy now. And so I think, like you just said, you know, like the last few years is a completely different time than it is now, um, which is which is great. How much? Uh, so, yes. Oh, go well, ahead. Just grateful that he's, you know, he he looks joyful and he and you know, um, I had dinner with him at South by Southwest, and he just was with his friends and wife, and he was just happy, and he's just, and I think, and he's smart, and he knows, and he's out there touring, and you know, doing interviews, and he's engaging and there's a new album there's a new documentary like he's he's in it and he's waking up every day just kind of taking that in and putting in his time and effort which for us as filmmakers that's that's i mean that's uh, that's amazing having your your main subject and the band go out and do these interviews and 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 to praise the the work um and to just want to share it i mean even when i when i saw david for the first time he, he just kind of looked at me he's like this is my life and this is my story and you told it better than i could I was like, well, there you go. That's it. That's the that's wrap. We 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 made it. If, like if we if we can't do it better than that, then yeah, you because know, it's like it's when you, when you're putting these you know art, and film, whatever you're doing, like it's personal to you, but it's their story. 
our art and your experience as a viewer. So you have your own, you're going to have your own experience, It's but it's still like their story and then we craft it into whatever art we see, whether it be with music or with cadence, style of editing. Like there's, there's so many things in there that make it this creative piece that's completely separate than celebrating the band. Like there's a creative piece of art, if you want to say, and then there's also this, this band and then there's what you got, what you guys are going to make of it, whatever the, whatever you guys want to take it or whatever, how many of you guys you want to watch it, praise mm -hmm. it, hate it, don't care for it. It's, it's, a, it's out of our hands now. We hit send. Yeah. I, I'm I'm pretty sure people are going to praise you, especially. I mean, everyone was just so impressed with the trailer, which I want to get into here. Did you have a lot of involvement in, in editing the trailer and putting it together? No. Thank Thank God, no. <laughs> uh, no, that's a different mindset. When you're, and it happens all the time. You'll be in this like long form story mode, like oh, I got to figure out this hour story, and then someone's like, "It's we need like a sizzle or like a trailer," and you're like, Ugh. "Like that's a different beast." It's so. You got to be on it. You're cutting something completely different. I've cut trailers. I can, I can do it. We can all mount up and make this trailer. But that was that's Disney. That's Disney's marketing department, and they crushed it. They made it was it was so satisfying to get a trailer and be like, I had no part in that. That's amazing. Great job. Like we gave you the whole thing, and you came back with something that I think is is great. So super satisfying on our end to have Hulu and Disney like marketing just on it. And they've been and and with the print. Um, the interviews, the events, who and Disney has been nothing but a great collaborator and partnership. For I know, and I don't. I know John feels the same way, and I know that's why he wanted to choose them is because they were ready to to go all in. They believed in it, and they they knew they had something that was just more than a, a rock doc celebrating loud concerts and and an '80s band. They knew they had like a real story. Yeah, and like I said, the trailer was was well done because you know we we talk about. Put forty years into five hours, then you put five hours into what a three minute. Yeah, trip. you know that's yeah, yeah. hard to do. But they, you know, tell them the story how about how the band got together, then they get into Richie, then they get into John's vocals, and you know I, they did a really good job. At that. It's an it's an art, it's a craft in itself. Yeah. I've worked with some really great. I remember I was doing a project, and they were doing the Game of Thrones trailers right down the the hall from me, and you just hear it over and over and over and then it's like a 30 seconds but they're working on it for weeks 30 seconds just weeks and weeks and weeks and we're over here weeks and weeks on a on five hours they can do the same thing just making sure that trailer every shot every moment everything is dialed in every piece of sound design is exactly as it needs to be because you get one shot to promote this thing and get people interested to watch it because there's seven thousand other things to watch um they're they're very good at their their jobs trailer editors and the last thing I wanted to say about the trailer too is the way that they incorporated the music, especially with "Living on a Prayer" and stuff. You know, like you know, there's different parts and stuff. And yeah, and I thought that that was like really good too because then it just gives you chills, you know, in, in special parts. So I thought that was cool. well. Now, so I remember early on, so we knew we were going to get a composer. So I'm really I'm huge film score buff. So I was bringing on all these film scores that I loved to that I would love to work with that we could never. They're millions of dollars that you can just like from big movies and that became my temp score that I was using and I was using one from Free Solo which is this live, live quartet and I really liked that it gave John the cinematic experience that wasn't Bon Jovi music let's give John like a like a movie character gets a theme and he gets a sound and, and he's going through all these things like a cinematic movie and that became part of it and I knew I was like well what if we bring in stems from Bon Jovi songs and we use his vocals and we put score over that and so I had Obi O'Brien, who's been with the band forever, and he separated some of the tracks for me so I could get the vocal tracks and I could put them under score. If so, if I didn't want Tico or I didn't want Dave to distract someone else is talking or someone else is doing something, I could keep some Bon Jovi DNA without completely making it impossible to hear what people are saying because they're battling a rock and roll song. So I worked with our composer Miles to like, how can we, where's the score here? And how can we be in John's vocals? How can his 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 vocal track be part of with these interviews how can we use these songs to be integrated with what they're saying as just like as if it's another interview almost sometimes and so we really got to flex on that in episode four you know all these songs to pull from as as he becomes a better storyteller as he becomes a little bit more prolific with his, his with his lyrics i could pull those apart and put them to a score and now it's a totally different sound and now it's a totally different meaning and then i could dip out and let someone speak and then come right back into it so that was a, a early idea that was really fun to see come to fruition when we started getting stems from Obi and from Shanks and 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 having material to work with like 
all these separate tracks that you could kind of play around with. Well, wow, that is awesome. I'm looking forward to so in the documentary there are like like isolated um instruments or, or parts of songs mm -hmm. in there. Man, that is gonna be pretty cool to to see. I, I love because if you go to YouTube, like sometimes you could hear like vocals only and everything else is gone. And that that's pretty cool because it kind of shows you, you know, each band member's talent, you know, because sometimes when everything's compiled, I, this is a side note here, when everything's compiled, you know, you don't really hear the bass line too much you don't hear the keys too much or the vocals overpowers the guitar so I'm, yeah. I'm actually really looking forward to that in the documentary when i told that to david too i was like man you he adds so many different elements like when you break it down to tracks it's not just like guitars drums vocals it's like hundreds of tracks and there's all kinds of instrumentations and i was looking at the different things david he was david had a piano he had an organ he had a synth he had all these different things i was like i didn't know all that was happening and you start pulling on the sun and there's this beautiful music and there's beautiful elements and i was like this is incredible david truly is just a just very very talented individual and i loved hearing uh, like just isolating his parts and, and seeing that um same thing with the other band members just hearing what they're doing individually that's not you know without any other uh elements going on is, is really a special thing in itself yeah yeah because some, sometimes you just think yeah, not just Bonjo, but any band, you know, sometimes the other band members who isn't the front man, sometimes they get overlooked. They don't, people don't realize how special their parts are and, and the hard work that gets put into those parts. And, and so, but yeah, again, I'm, I think, I'm, I think that goes for, you know, any band, any team, any, you know, the thing I, one thing I wasn't ready for is when this, the trailer dropped and, and just to see these different opinions of people who were like, well, Bon Jovi is this, or Bon Jovi is that, or we're this this side, and we're on this side, and we need this person, and they need this person. I wasn't really that savvy in all that, and mm -hmm. it's really just a group of very talented people, and their quarterback is John, and David's the first person to tell you that, like, he's going that way, and I'm going to follow him yep. to the best of my ability, and we're going to we're going to do this thing because we're a group, we're a family, and I know they get hate for that, but that's actually how they embrace it. And now they're one of the biggest bands in the world. And it's, he's, you know, there's, there's different ways to look at, at leaders and I mean, quarterback is always thrown around, but it's true. Quarterback needs someone to throw to quarterback needs to be able to do his job too. And if I think if you have that leader that loves everyone around him, it makes it so you can go for 40 years. I mean, how many other bands have broken up or don't play anymore or have, you know, you need six of them to do, a tour um so it's, exactly. there, there was a lot i wasn't ready for when it was like here's a bon jovi thing and people were like this is what the title means they better have this they better have done that and it was just like well like we're not like i mean i could have gone on the internet and like nope title means this and they're actually wrong actually we did get that person we did talk to that and i actually but you're gonna be spinning wheels and people already have all these expectations and these ideas in their head of what is and and that goes back to the expectations of the documentary. If they go in thinking it's going to be this and they don't get that, now the, now it sucks or now it's not a good movie. And that goes for any movie. Speaking of trailers, if you're if you're given something, an expectation of something, it's going to be a horror movie. And then you go in and it's more dialogue driven. And this, you're like, oh, that movie sucked. But you're not looking at it for what it is. You walked in there with your expectations of what it was. You walked in there thinking you were going to get a concert documentary or whatever the thing is. We're not. We're not a concert documentary we don't there's not just like full length tracks playing all the time and every bon jovi song you've ever heard in there it's like a selective part which is when i did think when we were working with john something i did think was going to be more controlled was like man so i listen so i listened to every single bon jovi song that you can listen to just run through the whole thing and i was like oh he's probably going to tell me like we need this one we need this one we need this one and i was kind of like all right that's gonna happen never not once not ever did he say that's not the song that, that goes there or that's not the thing or that's not the hit or that's it was just what we were putting in he was like it's all his music it's all his songs and to have free range on bon jovi songs it's kind of a magical thing and he he let us use the songs that we felt were right for the moment and the songs that we thought belonged in those spots and he rolled with it and but even in, in one of the episodes is a song called uh, Life is Beautiful, mm -hmm. and I'd never heard it before. Oh, and weird. before my grandfather passed away, he would always tell me, like, Life is Beautiful, take all these things. And so I was like, oh, that's a really great title. What is this song? 
And I listened to it and I was like, oh, I, I really like that. But it was personal to me. Like I listened to it and I knew that saying and I had had that saying in my life. And I put it in and I was like, let's see if anybody does anything about this. Okay. Songs in the movie, songs in the movie. And it's just because I felt it represented, you know, it's a great song by them. They did it, but it's also like my grandfather and my personal experience that putting that in the, in the show. And it's, and it's there. No one said, no, there's not a peep. It's not a hit, not a multi million dollar gold record. It's just a good song that I really enjoyed. It's what I call a true gem that's whole, it's underappreciated. So that I really appreciate hearing because you don't hear many people bring that title up. And that's a that's a great song uh, from Burning Bridges. Um, I, I wanted to touch on another thing too that you just mentioned too. Another great thing that I think is so great about this documentary is that, you know, and John has said this in many interviews in the last few weeks, is that he, and, and we know John likes to have and respectfully say this, he likes to have control over, you know, Bon Jovi is his baby. And so what I really liked about this documentary too, is that he wasn't in control of it, really. He kind of, in interviews, he would say that he let you, you know, editors, producers, directors just take charge of it. And he had nothing to do with any of that. And so I think that kind of makes it more special and more vulnerable to the fans to, to see. Yeah. I mean, Totally. Like, so this is my, my bedroom. Like if I unblur, like that's my bed right there. And this is my room and my house is my kids are there. The whole thing is cut here. And then on episode three, we had another editor, uh, Brady, and he was in his house in Colorado and he was, he was working on three. So it's all here. It's not like John was behind me and like, do this, do that, do that. And then nobody was here. It was just, this is where I was. And I would set like when I had a rough cut, I would send it to Gotham and we would talk about that. And every week we would talk about, this is what I found. This is what I think. This is what we should use. This is this. And the pandemic kind of created remote work. Just, just a great um, way for editors to stay here. Like I get to be with my kids and my family and do my job and I'm, everything's from home. So I wasn't willing to give that up. And we did Man the Arena. It was all remote. It was 2020. We had a full-blown pandemic when we did that. And we won an Emmy with that. And so it was like, well, this works. I mean, if we can win an Emmy from working from home, I think we can prove, we prove the system is it. So Gotham and I learned how to work remotely on that one. And then we did the same thing um, on this. And so John was, it was like collaborating with another artist. He's just a different art form. So you'd send him a rough cut and he, he could tell you, oh, that's the wrong stadium or, oh, that's the wrong thing. But it was never like, I need to say this or let me, you know, we had interviews where he's like, I can tell that story more clearly or like that was confusing and you could have opinions like that of like i don't I, what are you, I, what are we trying to do but it was never like this needs to be there and that needs to do that and doc needs to say this and whatever that was it was like here's where we're taking this here's the rough cut what do you think and then he hasn't seen a cut since september yeah. so i did i went to all the mixes and we mixed it all and we put in all these different elements and worked with those stems and did all that he hasn't seen or heard other than the first episode, which we watched it South by Southwest together, he doesn't see in the final four, two, and he just knew there's a point where he 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 realized he could trust us and that we were yeah. we were gonna do service to the to his band and all the band members and we were we weren't out to be on anyone's side or make anyone look a certain way or or project some sort of narrative like like you were saying they were pretty buttoned up, but they also weren't the drugs and rock and roll i remember that being one of the first things i thought like oh this isn't a drugs and rock and roll documentary one the footage doesn't exist there's no like yeah. of them blacking out or passing out on stage it was it wasn't it's not there but it also wasn't really their story it was something else it became more about hard work and persevering and family and brotherhood and believing in this band and what they were doing and their fans it became about that and not look how crazy the 80s were and look how many drugs and alcohol and things you can do like that ain't it like yeah. and I, I don't really think I could have told that story yeah and I, I I think that's like a story not a lot of people would even care I mean I, I guess it depends on the audience I guess but we know Bonjo is more than that you know and, and that kind of brings me to my, my next thing so when, when backing up just a little bit here I know you talked a little bit about the process but when this first got brought to you um did it did it follow the 2022 <laughs> tour in its entirety or it, I'll let you touch on, you know, how it started and what you followed the band on and how long filming took? I, sure. Yeah, I got the call. I was standing right here. Um, we had just finished Man the Arena and I said, John saw Man in the Arena and he wants me to do it. Um, I was like, oh, Bon Jovi, like that's a great band. I remember Crush and all these things. I have, I have my memories with them. 
I wasn't really familiar with uh, the Tales of Knock or Sale and some of these other albums, but Crush was a big, was a big thing for me. Um, and I was like, huh, I wonder what, what I have to, what, you know, what interesting things I have to, to contribute as an editor, filmmaker, what do I have to say about Bon Jovi? And I looked into it and started listening to their newer stuff and started 2020 and this and, oh, Richie, I remember, you know, he left the band and who's, what's Phil X? What's a Phil X? Um, and um, that was kind of where that was, but they were like, what would you do with it? What would this look like? What would, what would a Bon Jovi document, like if Tom Brady is this, man, you're going to think, what's Bon Jovi? And I said, all right, they had one interview and they sent it to me and I spent like three weeks doing three scenes. And I said, let me see what, let me collect, I just collected footage from the internet. It wasn't even like real, you could never have shown it. It was just like, I just pulled in a bunch of stuff and I was like, yeah, this is there. And he was talking about songwriting and he was very passionate about songwriting. And that was like his, his number one thing. Like, if you don't have a song, Richie says in the documentary, if you don't get a song, you don't got shit. So it was, it was a writer. And I was like, oh, that's really interesting. So I made these three scenes and we sent them to John. And he was like, loved it. Dorothy was crying or watching it. This is amazing. And it was like, we're off. So that was in 2022. And they're like going to do this rehearsal thing. And then it turned into something else. And they're doing these things and he's going through this journey. And then you're like, episode one took so long because we we're like, what is this thing? How many, like, are we going, are we going to be doing the old stuff? Or is it doing new? Like what's happening in real time? And it took a long time to find the cadence of 80s, 2022. And then what story where is this and so it was months about just episode one just recutting re-looking at it getting new material because he had all these tapes um in his basement but it was coming in in batches one week you'd get 50 videos the next week you'd get one so you never knew what how much was coming in and if that one piece was going to change your whole edit I'd get a piece and I'd be like, oh, well, that's the anchor for two. So I got to redo this whole other thing because <laughs> this one piece of material is better than anything I have. And now I have to re shift the focus to this part and use this because this is really great. Um, so it was like a moving target for a very long time. And then it kind of it kind of settled. And then we were just like full steam. And then it was, we knew what we were doing. We saw it. There was a style in one, there was a cadence in one, and there was an artistic element. And it was like, oh, that, this is, so this is our show. And that's going to be two, three, and four. And they can evolve over time, which they did. Because you're two years into it. You're a different person. You've seen different things. You've experienced different art, music, movies, references. And so four became a you know, flex in a different way. It was it grew into to something where I, I had fresh ideas and fresh creative ways to edit. And I would go backwards and implement those in, um, on previous episodes. And so it was always changing the whole time we were making it. It was always uh, moving. Wow, that's incredible. So so it starts out with, you know, them on the rehearsals and 2022 tour, and then it kind of moves forward to 23, early 24, maybe. And you just kind of, like you said, you kind of see John and the band evolve as they tell their story of the last 40 years. Yeah, so there's a balance of how, like, you know, what they're, where they are now and how they got to that point. And then what do you want? How do you bounce? How do you tell those two together? Because some of them, like I said before, some of them juxtapose each other and then some of them are complementing each other. Something that happened in the 80s and something that happened in 2022 could be similar. Or could, you could put those ideas together or look, look how far they've come or look at these things. And so you could tap into those moments to also give you the real time John. Because real time John is there's a relatable element there of like, what if you can't do the thing you love anymore? If he thinks he can't be the greatest singer, then he doesn't want to do it anymore. And I think that becomes a relatable thing. Age and time catch up to a lot of people and like you have to make choices. You can't do the thing you love anymore. What do you do? What do you do now that that's the thing that you're known for, that, that you're world famous for? That's a whole other level. But that's a really relatable element. You love to do something and now I'm telling you you can't do it anymore. And then what are you going to do about that? Um, how do you process that? And so that became a really strong thing for me to thematically to hold on to. Of like, people can relate to that. I've done. I have things that I love that maybe my time or my priorities in life don't allow me to do anymore. And so that be that's now a movie that I can have reflecting in my own life, my own decisions. And to me, that's the best movie that gets me to reflect my own life, not just to watch what someone else is going through, but like how can I implement that on me when it has nothing to do with me? I'm not Bon Jovi. Uh, never be as big as Bon Jovi. I'll never go through this experience. I will never be a celebrity. 
well, what can I pull that affects and has me reevaluating my own choices in my life? That to me is, that is a, now I've made the best movie possible if I've done that. Yeah. And it kind of ties into, you know, what I was saying in the beginning of the, the, um, the podcast is, you know, you know, people who look up to these celebrities and stuff, you know, by you crafting a story and, and being able to inspire others, you know, they, they can obviously, you know, they'll never be a Michael Jordan, they'll never be a John Bon Jovi, but they'll be able to be motivated in their own way, in their own passion, their own career, and if that makes any sense. 100%. I mean, and that's why I feel like, I mean, that's why I'm watching things I'm, yeah. i mean when you want to be yeah you want to be entertained and you and you want to go through that experience but it's there's knowledge in that so there's and then there's just it kind of you, you formulate different opinions you can learn things like if people just wanted to learn about the band and they just wanted to learn what bon jovi did they can go on wikipedia and they can watch the video version of that yeah. if they want they can go do that no you know easy we're not there to do that we're, we're there to make a, a cinematic experience and have you go through something and have you go through the story and have you go with these characters through this journey that they, that they have to tell you. Right. Wow. So we, we, we talk a lot about, you know, working with John and everything, but I, I also wanted to ask you, what was it like working with the other band members, you know, Richie, David, Tico, Alec, Hugh, and, and Phil, I'm, I'm sure it's Shanks too. How was it working, being able to work with those guys too? They're, they're all kind of wonderful. I mean, I met some of them for the first time at South by Southwest. Um, and funny, I've, been, I've I've probably talked the most with Phil X because he's uh, he's Canadian, and I just loved his story. And he's just he's just such a joy and such a good energy. Um, I'm a big I'm a I'm a big fan. Just miss him as a person. He's just he's just a good person. Um, and we just started talking. I was like, well, you know, Canadian Canadian brother. I'm making a documentary about you, and he was just so nice and open. And we kind of created a friendship around that. And so seeing him at South by Southwest was a joy for me. Um, and, you know, to learn about Shanks and to learn about Hugh meeting all, like they're, they're just, they're really good at what they do. Like yeah. they're, they're all really talented musicians and, you know, I met their wives and, you know, you, you have dinner with them and they're just, they're people, they're all just there trying to do, to make the best music and to share this music with, with everyone. And I think with Richie, I mean, Richie welcomed me into his home and was incredibly gracious with his time and his stories, um, showed me guitars and talked and we were there for a couple hours and he was just, you know, just happy to, to speak with some people about this band that he yeah. was a part of, you know? Wow. Um, so nothing but good things to say about all. And they all sat with us for over an hour on every, on every interview. Um, they love this band. They all wanted to be a part of it. They all wanted to give their perspective and they all wanted to talk about what they had gone through and how it was for them, which is all different. Every one of them was different. David is as funny as every single person on the internet seems to understand that he is. He is oh, that yeah. he is that sharp, like just at a at a table. He will he will catch it and he he's he's a joy to be around as well. So when you put them all together and and Everett is a kind soul and just, uh, I sat next to him at one point and I loved every minute of it. Just talking to him about music and family and art and all kinds of things. And he, he's a, a gentle, kind soul. He's very, um, I think he brings that to the band and I think they all feed off of each other's energy and it makes them a complete package, right? It's not, yeah. they're all together. They're all, they're all doing this thing. It's, you know, John's not holding high court and telling them what to do and not to do and this. They're all they're all in it together. Yeah. And you know what's so great about just having this chat here is, you know, you, you say that you really didn't know Bon Jovi other than, you know, Crush and the, and the big stuff. And and then just hearing how you became such a bigger fan of them and, and respect them and, and, you know, you praise each band member. I really hope that when like the general public who aren't necessarily fans or just general fans, I hope when they watch the documentary, they get the same effect where they just become bigger fans and love them just, just like you do here. I think that's, that's pretty, uh, pretty cool. You know? I mean, that's part of the goal too, right? Is to show, yeah. to, to show all that. I remember editing um, Phil X. I had a long, long story because I mean, what you just came in and then now you're the guitarist for Bon Jovi and like you were, just recording you're making youtube videos and now you're on 
stage with Bungie. Like that is the wildest thing I've ever heard. And such like people can just be so good at something that someone notices it and then you're up on stage and I get the lead guitarist for John Bonder. Like that's wild. And it was just resonated as like that's an incredible story. I don't care whose side or what you think it was or wasn't like that. There is a good story. And so just putting that, putting that there and showing his, his, his origin story um, is great. And I think people are going to be like, man, this guy's, this guy's cool. Like, this is a cool story. Like what an incredible journey to get to that point. And look at all he brings to the stage and look at the, look at the energy he's putting on this, on this stage and look at the joy that they're exuding together. Yeah, him and Everett, Phil and Everett, especially, you know, just seeing them on stage, just so happy to be. And obviously, you know, they're the the newer members. You know, Phil's obviously been there for right. 13 years. Everett's worked with John on and off on different projects since the late 90s. But even to this day, every time you see them on stage, they're just so excited to be there. They're happy to be there. And I think that they've added so much energy and excitement to the band. And I think the band needed that you know especially you know with the departure of richie and you know and everything else going on so i wanted, I wanted to applaud that um big, a big question is and and i don't want to spoil anything whatever you want to say about it so we know alec you know passed away in june of 22 just a few months after you guys got started what can you say about alec whether involvement or anything about the documentary that involved alec well, I think he said in that interview that it was dedicated to him. And so, um, you know, aside from it, I mean, he, his interviews are in the, uh, in the documentary, but uh, uh, aside from any spoilers, like that's, you know, we, we did the best with what we had of him um, and making sure that that was, you know, a, a part, a part of it and, and a big part of it. And especially since a lot of them credit, them for meeting each other you know richie knew alec and then they introduced him to them and they were in a band together and they do that and so all of that gets um all of that gets discussed but yeah he sadly passed away right in the middle yeah. while we were making it um and you know that becomes just another the, the documentary is really just another part of their story like right now i'm i'm somehow associated with that i'm somehow in it but it's gonna keep going and i won't be there any anymore my part of that bon jovi journey will kind of come to its conclusion of of, of that and then the documentary will live on but like my conversations with john or or that may kind of fall to the side as they continue to be a rock band and they, they're going to have this album maybe another album or maybe they go on another tour or maybe they do that this is this documentary is just the thing that's happening now for them just almost like a just like an album and then they're going to keep keep doing their thing you know and they'll have other people and other experiences and other people will enter or exit their relationships of the band. And I think it's important to remember too, is like, that's going to keep, Bon Jovi's going to keep going um, with different aspects that are, you know, a part of it or not a part of it. Right. And that I know that doesn't answer exactly, but I'm, I'm uh, that part I'm trying to just avoid, just like definitive, this is what's in the documentary and this is what's not. Oh yeah. Yep. For me, you have, I remember you had a lady uh, on the last podcast and she's like, the way episode one ends and it brought me so much joy because there, there was this black hole at the end of the episode and then we knew i knew exactly what we all kind of had like this idea and i was like this is what's going to slide in right here and sometimes when you do that it doesn't really work out you think like oh we're gonna get this pick up or we're gonna get the shot and you're like well that sucks that didn't work out but there's this black spot and i had it labeled and when we did get it man did it fly like once we got it in there i was like well that's it that's the episode mm -hmm. we're moving on like we're done and it was so satisfying to get it in. And so to have her reaction, and that's the reaction. I mean, we got the reaction at South by Southwest. We got that reaction yeah. when we watched the iHeart. It was just, just like, it's such a great moment. And it's one of the satisfying ones where you know it's going to just fly around in there and it's going to work. Um, and it totally did. Well, and the thing about this fandom too is, you know, we're all pretty interconnected, you know? So like, I know a ton of fans that got to see the London premiere, the LA premiere, the, you know, uh, Texas premiere. And every yeah. single, and I, I talked to a lot of fans and every single fan said they were just blown away by that first episode. I, and I think there was a premiere. They showed a, a second episode, but all well, the, the one down the street. So I lived down the street from the arrow. They did, they did all four. They you did. Could sit through, yeah. You could sit through all five hours. Um, I took, I took my oldest son. Yeah. It's a little bit, it's a little bit vulgar for him, but I was like, all right. So 
everyone's going to cuss a lot. You're not allowed to repeat any of these words. Don't ever hear, <laughs> let me or my mom hear you say these words. But this is what dad worked on um, for a very long time. And you, because you'll catch him around the house and he'll be like, won't it? And he'll just like, just start. <laughs> and so he knows and he knows John and he's like, you know, he, he knows that he's like, oh, that's John's fun job. He's super famous. I'm like, no, we're here with him like we're doing this and he's like yeah that's fine that's just sean bon Jovi. it's not a big deal i'm like cool son i'm glad i got the cool points for that but yeah they did all four so we sat we sat through two and then a 10 year old sitting through that much was like all right time to we're gonna go home and go to bed and go to school tomorrow um but the people stayed to watch three and four yeah that's but amazing. yeah one one has gotten good good praise and one's yeah. one's fun two's my favorite um because it is the an explosion but I do have a, a it's it's oddly a, a ties with four because of the creative stuff we were talking about before with four. I found a new energy and I found a new drive to put that one together. And it was a lot of fun to have all these pieces and stems. And, you know, when you're talking, you know, at that point I was meeting more of them and talking to more of the band members and talking to getting phone calls from OB and you just feel like you're in it. So you're making this thing, but you're talking to these people and it's like, Bon Jovi thing is just happening in this room and this is a bedroom of my house in Santa Monica. So it's, it's just kind of it's just kind of wild. It's very satisfying. Four was satisfying in just a completely different way. Right. Do you ever have like a a pinch me moment where you're like, I can't believe I'm talking to John Bon Jovi or I'm in Richie Sam Boris' house looking at his personal guitar? Like, yeah, yeah. Those pinch me moments. There's there's two specific that I can tell you about. So there was the Music Cares event that we got that Matt invited my wife and I to like the day of, and we walked in. And our ticket said seats 360. I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Like I, I just, I've only known John a little while. 300 makes sense. I'll be, I'll be way in the back. We walked in and it's just huge, huge room. So many tables. And we're like, oh, 700, 900. I'm like, oh man, there's so many. My wife and I are just kind of wandering around. I don't know anybody. I don't know any of these music people. I don't know any of these, these executives. I don't know any of these Spotify people or whoever it is. And we just get, get getting closer to the front, closer to the front, closer to the front. And I see on the table, Paul McCartney, John Bon Jovi, and Bruce Springsteen. I was like, my wife's like, she's like tapping my arm. And I was like, they're, being, they're just going to come in. Like, what, what are they doing here? What is, what's happening here? And then she turns around and she points at the table. And our names are on the table right behind that, like directly behind it. And we just look at each other like, oh my God, like what? And we'd asked where our table was. So this usher was like, hey, did you guys find your table? And we're like, yeah, we found it. And he was like, no, no, let me see. Is this right? Are you in the right place? And it's like, Please go away. This is where we're sitting. Nothing is changing about this. Like, this is where I'm going to sit. Like, my number doesn't match, but that's my name. Super long. Nobody else on the planet has that name. I'm sitting right here behind Bruce Springsteen, John Bon Jovi, and Paul McCartney. You can leave. And we didn't. We sat, <laughs> we sat there and it was just like, what are we What are we doing here? Like, why are we at this table? Um, and that was, uh, of all the pinch me moments, that was the one where it was just like, they're just there. And like, I'm a huge huge Bruce fan and, and huge John fan and huge Paul who's not a Paul McCartney fan like that was a lore like having a beetle in the room sets the whole like the like people become crazy um so that was that was like a, oh. a that was one of them um, and then of course meeting John for the first time yeah I was at a, a little hotel and uh I, I went to his hotel room and it was so weird because I went in like oh my god you're John Bon Jovi like you're so talented and you have this incredible career and I went in with that but he came at me with the other, that similar energy of like, you're a great editor, you're a great filmer, thank you so much. And it really caught me off guard. Like, no, I'm I'm coming to you. Like you are doing <laughs> incredible things. And he was telling me I was doing it. And it, my, my brain was just like, all right, we're just in a hotel room with John Bon Jovi. We're gonna listen to songs that aren't released yet. We're gonna talk about a movie. And it's just, that was like a, that was the very first one. And that was like a pinch me of like, I guess I'm gonna go to John Bon Jovi's hotel room. Uh, yeah, you know how, how many how many people can say those two stories, man? That that's that's awesome. Um, yeah, it was a, especially bring my wife to the second one because she sees that I'm doing all these things and she hears me and I'm like, oh, I got no one's calling, I gotta leave and I run out the house and I do this. You're just like, oh, I gotta do this. And she sees that and she's like, she's a labor and delivery nurse and she's incredible. She's I, I think the best nurse on the planet, but she always says like your job is so much cooler <laughs> than mine. Like John's calling your phone. And I'm, you know, in a hospital, you know, and what she does is a hundred times harder and more important than what I'm doing with these women and, and delivering babies and doing all 
obvious things, but she definitely gets FOMO of like some of the perks of of my job. Oh, that's, God bless her. That's I mean that is definitely a tough job. So God bless her there. Um, before we yeah. conclude, I wanted to talk about the title. I know we talked about it a little bit ago. Just kind of some clarity because a lot of people are asking this online, and even when we first heard about the documentary, when we first heard the title, "Thank You, Good Night." It, it sounds so final, but as you know, fans like me know that John has always said that at the end of every show. And so when we first heard that title back in what February is when they announced the documentary, we were wondering, okay, is this the end? Is this the the farewell year of the band or you know, what's going on? And there was there was like no clarity for at least a month. And then obviously John has come forward with, you know, saying that it's not the end and this is just what I've said every night. And, and, and in my opinion, I think it's a great documentary title. So I'll let you talk about, you know, how the title came about and if there was other titles or I'll just let you talk about it. Yeah, he talked about it. The, actually, the last two things I went to him with, people asked that. It seemed to be a big thing. Like, are you telling us goodbye? Like, are you telling us this is the end? We're going to end this thing and thank you, good night. And I never, I actually didn't, until the internet thought that that was what it was. I didn't really think of it like that. I thought of it, like you guys were saying, at the end of a concert. Thank you, good night. Like, and that goes back to this being just another chapter for the band. I think it's thank you, good night for this concert, this thing, this documentary. This it's just when he says it at the end of a show, he's not saying I'll never see you guys again. He's just saying thank you for putting your time into you know with us. Thank you for finding a babysitter and getting tickets and doing these things and spending three hours, in our case, five hours with us. Like thank you for sitting through that. You could have done a million other things. Thank you, good night. I think you represented that as just an appreciation to everybody the only thing the only other thing that we that was there was that he just didn't want it to be some title of a song like every other rock documentary he didn't want it to be living on a prayer or the bon jovi story like that was the only really the only opinion from him that i remember hearing of like we can do we could do something better let's find something more personal that's not just like shot through the heart the documentary that's not that's not what they wanted to do they wanted something else and when they said thank you good night i was like that's actually a lot i really like that i think that's a good a great it's a great thing you know you go on the hunt for you good night during concerts and, and putting it in there and like that was really that was it that was you know yeah. no, no thought behind it. i think you got more questions for it afterwards of like what does the title mean what are, what are what are you what are you telling us or what is it going to do this and, is it, and the internet means this he's actually telling us goodbye or like trailer means this and this clips yeah. from this and it's actually, actually no all of that is all over the place and all of that is everywhere and that's not even from the same scene even that new jersey thing that that they it was like it was all chopped up. There's all these different parts of different scenes that are like it's an edit of an edit of an edit. Like yeah. I'm pulling from music videos that are already pre-existing and cut. So I have limitations of what I can do with it or from pieces of, of you know, news pieces that are already edited. And then I edit that into something. And then someone went and did one level, you know, inception to and did another level of an edit of an edit. And you're just like, that's now, you know, that's something else. Um, so I'm excited for people to see the, that scene in context of what it actually is with New Jersey and the characters that are around that because it's such a rich part of the scene in New Jersey, which I had to research. I did I did not know what Asbury Park was. I did not know the New Jersey scene. I did not know he can't like Bruce was playing clubs. I did not definitely didn't know Southside Johnny or any of those guys. That's all research. That's all I had a table with all these cue cards. Um and I'd write out all the different scenes and characters and things and look like a crime, you know, it's like a, a crime investigation ish, but it was moving the cards around of what was going to be in what episode and who would show up and what characters were right and move those cards around to different episodes. And you learn something new, it's a new card and you put that in it, but I needed to visually see it and took up my whole entire dining room, just trying to piece these things and learn about all these places and learn about the little clubs and learn about the club scene and where, where David lived right up the street and then Tico's coming from New York and he has his Cuban roots and, and, and everyone's coming from these different places. You have to learn all that you have to take it all in and figure out what what are what are you going to say and what are you not going to say what's okay to keep out and what's okay to put in and, and again this goes back to what i was saying in the beginning you really put a lot of hard work into this and again for anyone that's listening you have really put a lot of passion and hard work into this and i think it's really going to show in the documentary you know there's other documentaries from other bands out there where it's just like you said like a concert slash interview thing and it's very superficial and it's you know 
they don't do their research and there's mistakes on this, mistakes on that. I think it, it, the way that you've talked about it and others, it just seems like you guys have really got gone into the roots of things and done your research, put hard work into it. And I mean, you guys have been working on this for over two years now. So, you know, I, I'm just excited to see it. And I know so many others are as well. Yeah, I appreciate that. That the the passion's a good word for it. And we did that, you know, we were very passionate about Man the Arena with, with Tom. We want to tell his story in a unique way. And I think that's, you know, I don't think we're here without that. I remember when we did Tom Brady, because we wanted to do something special. And I brought in all these visuals that are like stylistic choices and metaphors and symbolisms. And I remember people hitting me up on Twitter being like, why don't you just stick to football? This is a football guy, just show football. Why are you showing these other elements? because I was showing metaphors for storms and, and weathering that storm, like a football team and, and teamwork and all these things. And I had so much fun expressing different, showing visuals that express different things that it wasn't just football. That was the main thing we were trying to do. And some people just hated it for that. And you had kind of had to remember, John saw that and a lot of people saw that. I mean, this is unique. And this is what a unique way to tell this story. What a, what a, what a you know, specific vision to, to do this. And he saw that and was like, well, the team that thought about doing this about football, what would they think about doing this for 40 years of Bon Jovi? And we went a different, we went a different way. We don't have the same symbolisms and metaphors, but that same idea of like making a great movie, not just telling telling their story. Yeah. Um, so I think it all, you know, you're you're just trying to make the best piece of art, movie, whatever, whatever word you wanna, whatever you wanna do. Like I set out to be the John Bon Jovi of editing filmmaking like i want to be the top and so the same thing i tell the stories of those people the, the images and something like that's what i always wanted to do in film like i want to be the you know the guy that that made it in film it spits out so many people how can i get to the top how can i be the greatest editor greatest producer whatever whatever the title is um it's the same absolutely well you know only not only me, but you know, so many others. We appreciate you, and I you just sincerely appreciate you taking the time. You know, a lot of people are asking to have you on the podcast, and I I'm just thankful to be able to have you on. And it's been a great to kind of get your perspective and your ideas and and your creativity, and just being able to hear all about the documentary. So I just want to sincerely thank you again for taking the time to do that for me. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. It's fun fun to talk about you know something you put timing to you so i appreciate the the platform to chat about it absolutely and for anyone that's listening because i know there's a lot of questions online right now the documentary drops on april 26th um all four episodes are released on april 26th it's five hours in total every episode's what 60 to 90 minutes wouldn't you say um episode two is the only 90, 90 minutes. <laughs> it, was, it was damn hard to get it down to 90 as, as it was it was just this full rich thing and, and you know we're talking about it was a rough cut it was like two hours long I'm like we can't have kind of a two-hour episode it's a, it's, a, it's a movie and eventually we got it down to 90 even that i so i still can't watch it without thinking like oh i'm gonna make it shorter and do this but episodes one's a quick 50 and then the other ones are a little bit they're a little bit longer and i just kind of leaned into like well they're gonna be they're gonna be longer if it works we like we never had a limitation it wasn't like oh these they'll be 60 like nobody cared if it worked if this was the best version of it it was 47 minutes or 69 it didn't matter like whatever was the best version and 90 minutes we felt the best version for two there was just too much to say and we may not get another shot to to say some of these things so that's what it was so the second episode's 90 minutes and every other episode's what 60 give or take yeah a little bit more on the on the back on the back too Perfect. yeah and where people can watch is america is hulu overseas is disney plus and then latin america is star plus and then release okay. times just vary between country to country. So, um, yeah, I've seen a lot about that. Like, oh, what time for for me? What time for you? And that's above above my uh, my pay grade. Yeah. Me, who Disney department? I don't know when. Like, I won't be I won't be awake. So if people are staying up, by all means. But I don't know what, exactly what time those are going to launch at. But twenty sixth, twenty sixth is the day. Yep, I know that I am uh, staying up. I'm going to stay up all night. I am going to binge all five episodes. And, and maybe do a podcast about it and then get a little bit of sleep. And then later on the, over the weekend, I'm going to watch it again. I'll watch it again here. I'll watch Yeah, I'm going to watch a ton of time. So I don't know if anybody, I don't know if everybody should do the five hour, but you could easily bucket them like one and two. Let me go to bed. 
this, maybe not for you, but for other, yeah. you know, one and two, go to bed, wake up three and four, like they can, like you can kind of pair them. So if you didn't want to just do one, as you know, we were talking about one ends and you're just like, get, that's one of those ones where you're just like, get another lip. Here we go. It's 11 o'clock. I should go to bed. I got good kids and I got to go to work. Nope. Let's start the next one. And just, yeah. that's how I felt that, you know, watching it. And sometimes as editor in the team, you're watching it, you forget you're supposed to be watching it for certain things. You just watch it. And that's when you know you've made something good. Like my assistant editor, Charles, would tell me, I know I'm supposed to be watching it for this, but I actually just got caught just watching it and just like a, like a, like any other thing I just watched and I didn't do the things that I, I meant to be doing on it. And it takes time to get to the part where you feel like you've made something great. And I, and we got there with this one, in our opinion, like I can watch it and just be like, this is, this is a great documentary. Well, I have been looking forward to this documentary for years, ever since we heard the rumors about it. So anyone that is listening do not underestimate me. I promise you, Thursday night leading to Friday morning, I am going to have all five episodes watched, all four episodes watched. So, um, anyway, yeah, uh, I'll wake up and you'll be you'll be prime until you get out. You know, with your questions, I'll I'll be tired all day Friday, but it'll it'll be worth it. So, um, that's fantastic. Yeah, I'm going to end the recording. Don't hang up. But again, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to to do this for us. You're welcome. It. Thanks to you and 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 your fans of, of your page and I love they really respect you sharing yeah. the band and the love and the positivity and and just a, a good uh solid message message around just enjoying the band and enjoying the music. So thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Thanks, Alex.